Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And as you can see, I'm not back in Gloucester yet. I'm still in New Hampshire. I'll be here for a couple more days. I'll be back next week, back to work. But it's been a nice break. And just in case you're wondering, it's been in the upper 80s here most days and cooling off nicely at night for sleeping. And uh, lots of activity on the porch. I had a chipmunk run over my foot the other day while I was sitting here doing some work. <laughs> There's a lot of animals running around here. We have bears and everything else, too, which is fine. They don't do a thing. They just come and visit. All right, now let's take a look. It's been a sort of a busy week around uh, uh, on, on the web as far as auctions goes. A number of big sales closed out in the last couple of days on the global member pages, and those will be getting updated later on today. Uh, we update those pages fully, 100%, every uh, about every four or five, three to five, three to four days, I guess it's been. And we do minor tweaking during the rest of the time as we come across things that need to be added before they close, because we do check all the time just to be sure we get it all. But some interesting things happened. There were some good results, and there were some curious results. And we're going to take a look over here at some things that sold over on Invaluable. And uh, this was uh, one of them. This was uh, over at Druitt's, uh, Druitt's auction over in Newbury in the UK. They had this really lovely um, Yixing uh, Robin's Egg Blue Glazed uh, Square Form Teapot that sold. They had an, a crazy low estimate of two to 300 pounds on it. And... Um, over the years, we've had these, and they always seem to sell in the seven to $12,000 range. And this one went for 11,000 pounds, which is about right. Uh, it was a beautiful example. It needs a cleaning. As you can see, there's some dirty spots on it. And uh, these will clean up very, very nicely. And uh, that, that robin's egg blue color will really, really pop out, become very three-dimensional. Uh, but as they age, dirt gathers on them. And for some reason, people are hesitant to clean porcelain and pottery. Uh, the only time you really have to worry about it is if there's a lot of gilding on it. But if you have glazed pottery or glazed porcelain, you can generally clean it uh, just fine with a, a you know four nine or fantastic or you know dish soap or even oven cleaner at times on porcelain. It's perfectly fine as long as there's no gilding that can be disturbed because uh, oven cleaner will remove gilding. Okay, all right, and that sold for eleven thousand. And then on to this. This is a sale coming up on the twenty fifth of June. Uh, there's a number of sales on uh, the on the twenty fifth of June. This is one of them. This is Heritage's sale. <clears throat> and if you're a dealer, what's interesting here is that they've put together some pretty nice lots. You want to check them out because they mentioned that some of them have hairlines and whatnot, but they're fairly generous lots for, for, for what they are. And uh, you, if you see something in here, if you're a collector or a dealer and you, you maybe want to buy one of the pieces and keep it, but you're not interested in the others, you can always resell them and get back most of your money. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, but if you're a dealer, I would definitely check these out because this is in this example, you have five pieces with an estimate of eight to twelve hundred dollars, which is which to me seems very low. The, the piece on the left certainly looks to be a nice little Ming jar, probably worth two thirds of the uh, estimate alone, right there. And uh, then you have these little Famille Rose 18th century pieces, that big blue uh, Kung Shi style brush pot. It's probably 19th century, I would assume, but check it out. And uh, then you have this jar, which also I think is 19th century, but add it up. You, there's some money to be made. So, so uh, always look at lots when you have a chance. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. We have a lot of pine pollen up here. It's one thing. <laughs> anyway, um, on to this. This is the uh, the uh, Ming Dynasty Long Quan Celadon dish that's being sold by Joel Leonard on the 23rd of June. All right, and this is a nice one. It's a sort of a barb rimmed example that doesn't appear to have a lot of wear in the middle. Perfectly nice. Has a good looking uh, back on it. There it is, and it has a four to uh, six thousand uh, Australian dollar estimate. But uh, the Australian dollar right now is is exchanging for about sixty five cents on the dollar. So um, uh, the, the the U.S. dollar estimate, for example, and this would be under three thousand, about twenty seven hundred or so. So you might, if you're a Celadon buyer, I had a couple of inquiries this week about Celadons, Ming Celadons in particular. This was this was this is a good one. But somebody had sent some other pictures through the uh, inquiry program, wondering about auction lots, and and I and I, and I, I demurred on some of them. Um, a couple of them were okay, but this one didn't come up at all. And, and if you're a, a Celadon buyer, look at this one. It's about I think it's thirteen or fourteen inches in diameter, but it's a good look pot and if you can buy it in the mid to low end of the estimate range you're doing very well all right and then on to this this is a sale that Kohler's is having over in Zurich 
uh, nice looking Japanese seto ware uh, mizu uh, sashi uh, water pot for the tea ceremony. You've seen them before. This is a nice early one, uh, 16th to 17th century. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. Love how the glaze runs down in pools just above the foot. Um, the uh, sort of hair's fur pattern uh, that you see on sung pieces is sort of evident on the sides of this pot. And then you have these nice, very sort of dramatic uh, uh, dribbles of glaze down the side. Good looking pot, 1,500 to 2,500 Swiss francs. Uh, you check the exchange rate on that, it's not bad. And then over to here, this is something that also is at Heritage. It's a very nice Canton factory painting, mid 19th century, uh, 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 about 18 inches in width, they say. Uh, but it's an interesting scene, uh, lots of activity in the foreground with boats and ships and whatnot going. If you're interested in China trade paintings, you want to check it. They also have a couple of other good, good uh, Chinese export paintings as well. All righty, and then on to this. This is a just a very nice Kung Shi bowl that they have up for sale. It has a fairly modest estimate because apparently there's some rubbing to the interior, to the glaze for some reason, um, which is not unusual in these, but it's an eight inch bowl. It's a big one and it's very, very well decorated. It's a nicely decorated example with a $1,500 to $2,000 estimate and a $750 opening bid. So that might be something that's pretty buyable. All right, and then over on the uh, uh, Sotheby's uh, section of the site, uh, a, a sale just went up, and this is their uh, a big classical uh, Chinese painting sale in Hong Kong. And there's some lovely examples in here. There's some very good uh, fan paintings, some great uh, colophons of script and so forth, if that's what you're interested in. Um, I'm not a big script buyer because I, 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 I don't read Chinese. Uh, my wife does, but I don't. And um, uh, But some of the brushwork is very, very attractive, I have to say. But the painting are quite good as well and uh, among the ones that I saw that I particularly liked was this one this is a uh, by is one is one Chinese uh, art uh, collector once said my favorite painting painter in China was a non his name was anonymous and uh, this one is attributed to Su Han Chen but they're, they, they're not certain of it uh, apparently but it's a lovely uh, scene of, of, of a woman bathing her child with, a, with an attendant coming over and uh, here you have the this is the bedroom it's a very elaborate bedroom so it's the it's the bedroom of an upper-class Chinese family, uh, beautifully done with a 20 to 30,000 Hong Kong estimate, which which comes out to uh, roughly uh, uh, t you know two to four thousand dollars somewhere in there, two to three thousand dollar estimate. It's a nice painting if you like Chinese paintings. Uh, sometimes you get a very good buy with ones that are just anonymous uh, because they're not you're not going to play the price chase uh, because of who signed it. All right. And here's another Ming Dynasty painting. This is a very classical one. Uh, lots of Ming paintings around in this general style with uh, children bent over. Um, this, this, this one, they're uh, looking at a, a little a tank they've got set up, a little bronze, or, or either that or it's a huge piece of Yixing. I suspect it's bronze. And they're floating a junk in it. And I love that. They're, they're floating a boat, and here's a little boy bringing over another one. And they're all sort of wide-eyed and enjoying it. And you have this beautiful lotus blossom blooming up um, on the side, and there are other lotuses at the top. Here's a boy playing um, over, a, over a tank full of lotus blossoms. You see that? It's easy to miss if you don't look at it carefully. But this is a great big blue ground and gilt decorated fish tank. And in it, they have lotus blossoms, which is what they did with them when they when they had them in their houses. A lot of people think they put great big standing plants in them. Often they filled them with water and uh, 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 put lotuses in them like that. Very interesting. This is a nice painting. I love the balustrade in the background too. It's very, very well done. And uh, it's got a, a fairly reasonable estimate, three, 30 to 50,000 Hong Kong, which comes out, you know, to, to what, th uh, four, f four to, Four to six thousand dollars for that. That's a heck of a nice painting for four to six thousand dollars. It's only, uh, it's, 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 and it's, and it's, what is it? How big is it? It's 50, 52 inches by 34 inches. That's a big painting. Uh, and uh, imagine that on in a nice frame put up properly. Okay. So check that out. All right. And then over here on Live Auctioneers, there was some stuff going on. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, this was uh, one of the bowls that went through Freeman's um, this week. They had sort of an oddball sale. Um, it, it happened uh, just today. It's, cl it's still closing um, as, as I'm recording this. But uh, they had some rather odd prices. And I, this was um, this bowl sold for 16000 with a fifteen dollars to $25,000 estimate. This bowl was a surprise. I had inquiries about this bowl uh, because it had sold sold a number about eight or nine, ten years ago or so, I forget, um, for uh, around uh, thirty-eight to $44,000 or something. It was the same bowl, same exact bowl. I went and checked. It was on Sotheby's because somebody asked about it. 
had a thirty to fifty thousand dollar estimate, a starting bid of fifteen thousand in the lot passed. All right. If you're interested in this bowl, I would strongly suggest you contact Freeman and see if you can't negotiate a post sale price on it, because it would seem to me that the seller who uh, probably wants it gone. All right. And he's probably pretty disappointed at this point. So you might get a deal. All right. And then on to this was this very nice Han archaic uh, bronze footed bronze. It's a famous form. It had a five to seven thousand dollar estimate, which seemed quite reasonable. The surface on it was very good. This was sold by Michael Goodwies over in London years ago. If you don't know Michael, he's a uh, uh, top London dealer. He's been around forever, and he's an expert in early bronzes, metalworks, iron, uh, uh, and so forth. We sold him uh, through through an intermediary a number of years ago, a dated uh, Ming Dynasty uh, iron Kuan Yin figure. Um, to a dealer friend of mine in Connecticut, and uh, he, he, was, he knows a lot about this stuff. And uh, this was a, I think this was a very nice buy. This thing was uh, beautifully decorated. You can see the relief work all the way around it. It's not just a plain smooth body. And I don't know if anybody really took the time to look at this or not, um, but it only went for $2,400, which I think was a great buy. And then on to this was the Taoist female white marble carving. They had listed it as um, uh, being a Sung Dynasty. And uh, it had, had a provenance um, going back to um, uh, Warren Cox, who was a very, very famous uh, dealer in New York for many years. He wrote, he wrote two, that famous two-volume set on ch uh, Chinese porcelain and pottery. And it had a five to $7,000 uh, estimate, and it passed with an opening bid of 2400 And uh, I had an inquiry about this week, and I didn't think it was Sung. They had dated it as Sung. I think it was a bit later. I think it was probably Ming, possibly late Yuan, but I think probably Ming. Um, the big Rue head on the front of the robe just didn't look right to me uh, for, for a Sung example. And the way the shoulders were done, the, the shoulder padding on the robes, so forth, looks more Ming to me. But anyway, mm -hmm. if you're interested in that, also get a hold of them, see if they can sell it to you. All right, and then on to this. This was another good buy. This was a, a nice Han Dynasty archaic form, uh, 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 bronze, uh, beautifully done. This was sold by the Far Eastern Art and Antiques Company in New York. Uh, a beautiful example. And these, of course, are the forerunners of the uh, later uh, uh, Ming, Ming moon flasks and the uh, Qing Dynasty moon flasks and so forth. <clears throat> Here it is in the original uh, bronze form. They're very, fairly simple bodied, but they were uh, made... Uh, um, in the Han Dynasty, the good early ones. And uh, I think this was a very reasonable price because I've seen them sell for much more, you know, four, five, six thousand at times. This one went for 1400 So I think that was a very nice buy. And then this, an another one, this was another piece that was sold by Michael Goodwies um, uh, to somebody. It was a Han Dynasty example, three to five thousand dollar estimate. It was pretty good size, too. This was a 14 inch tall pot. This was a 14 inch tall bronze with a nice surface on it. I love that, that raggedy bluish patinated surface on it. It's a good old piece. And uh, somebody, I think, got it on this a really good buy. It sold for a single bid of $1,600 with a three dollars to $5,000 estimate. So what that tells you is that their reserves are about, in, in some cases, half their low estimates. It's just something to put in your back pocket to know for later on. But anyway, that was a, a tremendous buy. That was a really, really, really good buy, I think. And then over here, uh, the Arts of Asia sale is taking place in, in another week or so over in Paris at Christie's. Uh, they have some very, very nice examples in there. It's a good, it's a very well-rounded sale. Um, as the, if you're not familiar with their Paris sales, they tend to be very well-rounded. They sort of get a little bit of everything from everywhere, Chinese, and they put them all in uh, at once. So you have lots of good lacquer. You've got very, very nice cloisonne examples and so forth. This is a 223 lot sale and um, some good Tibetan bronzes. You'll find a lot of good Tibetan bronzes in France and uh, some very nice tankas and so on, carpets and whatnot. And the estimates and some of the estimates are quite reasonable. So uh, if you're interested or you're over there, go check it out. Go check that sale out. And now over to the regular stuff that happened this week. Uh, one of the things that happened was this. This is a really nice little Kung Shi period uh, dish. I talked about it last week because I like the fact that the interior uh, cobalt decoration was nice and dark. And then the outside, they used that sort of single stroke penciling technique uh, just to add a little change to it. And uh, somebody got a nice buy on this, 114 uh, euros. Very reasonable. That was a good plate for 114 euros. Bravo. 
And uh, then on to this, this was over on the eBay side, <clears throat> was this, uh, you know, precious objects jar. They started making these in the Kangxi period. This looks like a early 19th century one to me, but very well painted. The painting on this pot was really quite excellent. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. You have that blackening and, you know, from whatnot from stands and the shape of the foot and that crackle clearly point to the 19th century. But the uh, decoration on this was really well done very well done and nice and tight no bleeding and uh it, and it had its lid which is unusual and it sold for 509 dollars which is perfectly reasonable for that that was a nice example and uh with good quality decoration and then on to this this is something we don't normally put in but i just this struck my fancy this was a, a european hand colored engraving of um of uh of, of uh, china with all the junks and boats and ships it was probably taken out of a book or a magazine or something uh here's a detail of it you can see the print lines but it's probably was hand colored later these were often printed um originally just in black and white and then they would hand color them in, uh, especially in the 19th century it's fairly common and you if you check them under a loop you can see how they colored them in any rate this was a nice one and it went for just 186 dollars it was dated apparently 18 1735 so it was right at the uh, you know the end of the Yongshan period, uh, but very interesting uh, uh, print, and with hand coloring. So I, hope, so I hope one of you got that. That was a nice thing. It deserved to be framed. And then on to this. There's this Kangxi period uh, uh, Wutsai uh, dish. Here's a picture of the back of it with that, uh, that, 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 that sort of tracked foot rim running around it. Nice and creamy, looking very good. Nice and white in here. It looked a little dirty over here, but the color there looked very good. And uh, here's the decoration. The iron red on it was still in very good shape. Some fritting around the edge, as you can see, and so forth. Uh, they had dated it as Chin Lung. I don't know really why. Uh, and apparently the bidders disagreed with them because it ended up selling for $1,813. And this was a fairly good-sized piece. It was, uh, let's see here, 34, 13 and one-third inches wide. So it was a charger, technically. And uh, that makes a big difference. But that was a pretty plate, and the enameling on it was still in good condition. And then over here to this, this was a, a nice, uh, possibly Kangxi or early, uh, early uh, Chin Lung period dish, but I loved the leaf on it. I just loved the way that leaf was painted in there, just sort of flows under and has a vase sitting on it with peonies coming out of it, and then the rest of it very delicately and simply done. Sort of a very, very pretty little painting. Um, and I think somebody got a lovely buy on this, $58.89 somebody left a bid <laughs> all right always leave a bid because this kind of thing can happen and you end up getting a great little dish and the shipping from 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 the netherlands to here for example on this as you can see is just 36 dollars which is very reasonable so for under 100 dollars, you got yourself a heck of a nice plate with an interesting interesting design there you go and then over to this this was that uh, ivory that's supposed to sell ivory on ebay but lord knows everybody does this was a very nice cantonese ivory uh, card case uh, very good quality from a seller here in the united states beautifully done and uh, it did fine it ended up selling for 709 dollars this was a seller up in uh, as i recall up in new hampshire manchester new hampshire but uh, a very nice little box. Here's a picture of it open. Um, sometimes I, when, you, when you get these boxes, you want to check them uh, because this section of the box here, this very thin, thin inner wall that the upper cover fits over, they tend to chip for some reason. Maybe they get taken off roughly. I don't know. But always check them for chips, okay? It doesn't make a huge difference because you're paying for the carbon quality, but it's worth knowing about anyway, all right? And then on to this. This was something that uh, Mark uh, Wahlberg, uh, all right, it's at Sunlock, sunlink.net. He's a very good dealer. In in, uh, in Pennsylvania, in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. And he had this lovely and very unusual 12th century Koryo period Sung, uh, I mean, a Korean Celadon uh, cup. Uh, beautiful, beautiful example. And it had a very nice white inlay in the body. You can see it all around. And uh, there you can see it better here. And these are, you know, uh, green glaze and then slipped. Uh, carved and then slip decorated in white and it went for just $575 and this was a rare form this was a quite rare form for Korean uh, pottery so whoever got it got a, a good item okay it's not like the common vases and whatnot it's much better better and then over to this this was something else Mark had up it was this uh, very nice uh, Yongshen period probably uh, possibly Chin Lung uh, uh, framed dish 
with a European scene in it, with with a, a Dutch scene, it looks like, with the buildings in the background and uh, a young man courting a lady and uh, her mother looking out over the window, out of the window at them. And uh, this sold for just $232. All right, you can't beat that. That was a great little buy, and it was all framed up in this lovely antique wooden frame. Just a, an interesting, interesting piece. Nice thing to hang. Nice thing. It was ready to hang. You don't have to buy a holder for it. And here's a surprise of the week. This didn't get any bids, apparently. This was a very nice dragon, silk dragon roundel with gilt metallic threads. And it was already in a, in a, in a, in a, in a shadow box with a uh, glass dome over it. And um, it ended up not selling. It had an opening bid of $100. I don't know what happened here. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised nobody threw a bid at that for 100 bucks. If you saw it and you didn't leave a bid, well... Sorry, um, it didn't appear to have a reserve, so uh, maybe it'll reappear. We'll, we can only hope. And then there's this. This is one of those two very nice 19th century late Qing uh, landscapes uh, paintings, watercolors that I thought was so terrific, all framed, ready to go. The frames are obviously are more, much more recent, but these are two very nice paintings. There was one in this lot, and then he sold another one separately, but they were quite similar and were by the same artist. And I went for $355. That was a nice buy. Those are sweet paintings. They were genuine. And if you bought them both, they're going to look great on a wall in your house. Um, just fabulous. And these are good size, so um, I forget how big they were, like 30 inches or something, 28 inches. Uh, image range, uh, 10 by 7, including silk border. Okay, 14 by 16 framed, yeah, so they're, they're, they're nice size presents. The paintings are 10 by 11. All right, not quite as big as I thought, but I think those, those were a very nice buy. But then again, they did come out of a leaf album probably, so they wouldn't be too big. Should, should have thought of that. But anyway, those were nice. $355. And then on to this, this uh, Cantonese lacquered uh, 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 fan. Um, and he, it was awfully dark. I don't know why he did it so darkly. There we go. And uh, you can see it. It's a fairly standard one, but the, the, the lacquer work was quite excellent on it, I thought. And it seemed to be in good shape um, all the way around. Not a lot of wear chipping or wear to the gilding. And the painting itself was uh, sort of intense. There was a lot of activity going on here. And I cannot tell whether or not the faces are all painted on little ivory uh, pieces. Sometimes they are. You want to always check those. Sometimes they did the, the faces on tiny ivory plaques to make them look very white. And I can't really tell from the picture. And he, I don't think he mentioned it in his description. But at any rate, this was a nice fan. And it went reasonably. $610. That was a, that was a nice buy for $610. Because as you know, we we've always cover fans because it's, it's a very big collectible category. A lot of fan collectors in Europe especially. And... Um, not just Chinese fans, all kinds of fans, French fans, Italian fans, Russian fans, you name it. But uh, that was a nice one. And for $610, because we've seen them in the past go for upwards of 1000 All right. And then over here to what's coming up, this is something I just spotted this morning. And they have it described as, i got to do a little homework on this. They have this described as a, as a Chinese bronze Kuan Yin. To me, this form looks very Japanese. Um, and I, I don't think it's probably Chinese. But, but... It's a good early bronze, whatever it is. But she's the, the, the way the robes are done and the facial expressions and the way the hair is tied, to me, looks terribly Chinese. And it's only got two bids. It's got nine days to go. It'll be in this week's newsletter, so you'll be able to find it. I might even feature it because I just love figural bronzes like that. Nice dark patina and, and you know, just a, a nice example. So you want to check that out. And then on to this. This is a bronze that popped up this week that's on. There's a Ming Dynasty, possibly Yuan Dynasty uh, bronze. With with these big handles on it, nice patina. Uh, this is a nice old bronze. This is a genuine nice old bronze with the chimera climbing up over the relief work on the outside, the loop handles and all this other stuff. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, looks good. Um, and there's a tiny chip out of the corner here. I don't care about that. That's an interesting looking bronze. It's got one bid at $9.99. Um, it's got uh, eight days to go. We'll see where that ends up. Uh, but we'll put that in the newsletter, of course. And then on to this. If you're a Yixing buyer, pay attention to this. This is a heck of a piece of Yixing ware. This is a basin, uh, late 19th century Yixing basin with the uh, uh, exterior, you know, light blue decoration that you see on lots of Yixing pieces using this color. But the interior of it is fabulously well painted. This is a beautifully done piece of Yixing, particularly fine. Uh, classic, you know, Chinese landscape scheme with the pagodas in the background. And then you have this little sort of village scene with bridges and so forth. 
and this very elaborate outer border, just a profusion of flowers. And then it's separated by a cavetto repeating the exterior scene, uh, the exterior, the, the back, the back uh, decoration, but this time they've added some colored flowers. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And uh, it is 13 and a half inches wide. So this isn't a little dish, it's a good size. It's a charger size bowl or basin. Uh, it's got one bid at nine hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Um, I ex I would I would think this would bring two or three thousand. It's a pretty pretty darn nice piece of Yiching ware. Look great on a wall. Wow. Um, and then onto this, another fan turned up this week. This is I like this one. <clears throat> this is a very similar one that we saw a few weeks ago that had the uh, sailboats on the back and then people on the front. This one has a little bay area outside of Canton, perhaps or Shanghai. Um, nicely done and then the front of it has the uh, standard uh, figural scenes on it. It does have a split here of some kind so you want to get that looked into but uh, it's a very very nice old fan. Uh, first quarter, first probably the, around 1825 figure it, 1825 to 1840. It's got some minor repairs but very interesting fan with really fine ivory blades. Beautifully carved ivory ivory blades with a little imperfection over in here uh, contact the seller with you know any condition issues but that's a nice one it's got four days to go it's up to 168 dollars that'll be in the newsletter this week and then this closes tomorrow which is that very nice uh, uh looks to me to be uh, uh let's see here looks to be more transitional than kang shi to me if it's if it's Kang Shi, it's 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 very early Kang Shi. But at any rate, it's up to fifteen hundred and eighty dollars. A nice big jar. Um, this is Digger Studio is selling this here, actually down in Massachusetts in the town of Drakeet. Um, he gets good things. He knows what he's doing. Um, so uh, you want to check that out. And then over here, uh, Josh Chamberlain has a big sale that just went up. Uh, it went up too late for last week's newsletter, and uh, we'll have it in this week. It closes um, on Monday. But he has a very nice collection of subas in the sale, in addition to some good Chinese things. Uh, so if you're a suba buyer, Japanese buyer, you might want to check it out. I like this one with the, with the, with the sort of speckled ground and then the, the snail on it and so forth. Nice looking, nice looking tsuba. It's up to $100. It closes Monday at 9 o'clock. Uh, so you want to check his sale out. We'll have a number of his things in the sale as uh, we generally do when Josh puts up things. He gets, he's, he has a pretty good track record, I must say. And then on to this, the Ming Bowl. This Ming Bowl is up now on eBay. And there's some other very similar pieces over in Katowicki right now. So actually, you want to check them both out on the newsletter page. And this is a, ni a nice looking one, sort of a Swato type with two with a rooster and a, and a hen in the middle of it, sort of squabbling over something. And then you have the, uh, uh, the, 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 the bamboo trees and the pine trees and so forth uh, around the interior and this nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, s s scale pattern. Uh, with these long longes between them and then a, a simple cavetto running around the inside with nicely spaced decorations. It's a good looking plate, at any rate. Um, it's up to $206. It also closes on uh, Monday. This is another piece that Josh has, and uh, it'll probably do a good bit better than that by the time it's done, but we'll see it. How big was this plate? Hold on. Uh, 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 15 inches, yeah, I thought. It's a big one, so it's, you know, it's a nice big Swato plate. Figure six hundred to nine hundred dollars, something like that. But it's a good-looking piece, all right. And uh, as I say, always leave a bid. And thanks for uh, stopping by. Give us a thumbs up if you like the videos. And I will be back in Massachusetts uh, next week to get back to things. And the global member pages will be updated later on today. We'll get all the sold stuff off and put everything back. Um, anything new that's come in, and uh, let everybody know. We'll do an update. Okay. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye bye.